Okay, hi, my name is Noreen, and I'm going to show you how to analyze your green crystals for cobalt content. Okay, so first we're going to reduce our green crystal solution. So we're going to do this by adding between 0.7 to 0.8 grams of green crystals into a 150 milliliter beaker. Okay, so now we're going to add 20 milliliters of DI water to the green crystals. Then we're going to add 0.4 grams of zinc into the solution. You're going to swirl this, this for 30 minutes, and eventually it's going to look like this. It'll be a deep red color, kind of murky. Oh, and you have to wear your goggles, so don't forget those. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to pour this solution into your 50 milliliter volumetric glass. And make sure to not let any of the zinc get into the flask. So just pour it in there. Make sure to stir it up a little before you go. And then you're going to rinse the leftover zinc with 5 milliliters of water. And you're going to swirl that around like that. And you're just going to pour it in here. Okay. And then you're going to take your funnel out and dilute it up to the 50 milliliter mark right there. So you're just going to take your squirting bottle and just keep pouring it until it gets all the way up there. Okay, so now you have to set up your ion exchange. Ion exchange. Okay, so first you need a column and you need a stopcock. And in the stopcock there's like at least two centimeters of cotton at the very bottom. And right here is your resin slurry, which your TA will most likely pour into your column for you. And there's a good amount of water on top. So for now, we have to make sure that the resin is acidic. So you do this by taking a little piece of litmus paper and opening the stopcock slightly and making sure the paper turns red. So if it looks like that, that means your resin slurry is acidic. So that's good. Okay, so now you have to make your resin slurry basic. And you do this by just keep on pouring DI water through. You take your bottle and just keep pouring water through. And to test if it's basic or not, all you have to do is, again, just take your litmus paper and just let it touch the tip. And as you can see, the tip of the litmus paper stays blue. So that means that your resin slurry is neutral. So now that our efferent is neutral, we're going to switch from our waste beaker to our Erlenmeyer flask and put it underneath the column. Make sure that the water level is right above the resin slurry when it's neutral. Okay, so now we're going to take 10 milliliters of our reduced green crystal solution. Put it into our graduated cylinder. Okay, and you're just going to pour it right on top of your column. And you're going to let this flow through until your solution is neutral. Okay, so now we have to wait for the efferent to become neutral again. So make your column drop at a rate of two to three drops per second. And just take your litmus paper and test it really fast. Okay, so make sure that your resin slurry stays moist by adding a good amount of water on top. And making sure that the water level is above the resin slurry. And to test your resin slurry, just put some litmus paper and see that it is neutral. So that's good. So you just keep on adding water and make sure it's all um, very moist to avoid air bubbles and stuff. Okay, so after your effort is neutral, that's your run one. And you'll take that off to be titrated by um, NaOH to get the content of cobalt. Uh, to regenerate your acidic resin slurry, all you have to do is take 50 milliliters of HCl and pour it right on top of your slurry. 
and just let it flow through until it turns acidic again. And then when it turns acidic, you're ready for your REN2. And again, you just take that to be titrated with the NaOH. So after you're done finding your REN1 and REN2 and you've done your titrations, make sure you put all of your waste in the heavy metals waste disposal. And after that, you're good to go. All right, hope it helped. Bye. <laughs>